Hello and welcome to the Friday, March 10th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, I think it's the third time this week, uh, maybe the second time, and uh, not sure, that uh, I'll be talking about a uh, attack that's uh, more sophisticated and affecting parameter security devices. This time it's Sonic Wall's uh, turn. In particular, the Sonic Wall Secure Mobile Access Appliance, and it is targeted by what Mandian attributes to a Chinese actor. So these Sonic Wall appliances do run based on Linux. The malware is exploiting a well-known and uh, patched vulnerability. But if you didn't apply the patch, well, uh, then it'll take over your system. It comes in the form of sort of simple bash scripts initially uh, just to get sort of the infection started. Also, it uses and very common for Unix uh, process names that sort of fit in with what you may expect on a Linux device like firewall D or HTTP SD uh, or IP tables. Uh, the, these are some of the names it's using. Uh, what I find particularly interesting is that it's specifically built uh, to survive a firmware upgrade. On these Sonic Wall devices, if you upgrade the firmware, there's first a file being uploaded to the device and it's placed in a specific directory on a, a specific uh, file name. It's a zip file that's then of course being expanded into uh, the new firmware. Well, uh, the trick here that uh, this particular bot plays is that it keeps monitoring the location where the new firmware image uh, would be loaded before it's being installed. And then it unzips it and adds an, a backdoor root account. Well, it's actually using Acme as a username, but the UID and GID of a zero. So with that, if the new firmware is installed, the bot will no longer be present on the system but uh, this uh, backdoor account can then be used to reinfect the system. Mannion just now uh, published uh, details about uh, this particular attack, but apparently at least uh, some of uh, the features of this attack go back to 2021. And Fortinet reminds us that, well, old vulnerabilities are still being exploited. In this case, it's a WebLogic vulnerability. Good old friend WebLogic. We have written about WebLogic exploits quite a bit in the past. In this particular case, well, a crypto coin miner is eventually uh, being uh, loaded onto the system that's being infected here. But uh, the infection chain has an interesting cryptor being uh, involved here. Now the cryptor here shouldn't be mixed up with sort of crypto coin mining, but the scrub crypt cryptor that they're using here is really more sort of an obfuscation script that's being used in order to bypass antivirus or and any other anti-malware system that may be intercepting the file. It's yes, encrypting it, but the really more sort of an obfuscated way, if that makes sense, by including, of course, keys and such as part of the file that's being uh, transmitted. This particular attack is also exclusively targeting uh, Windows systems. Not that unusual for WebLogic attacks, but most of the attacks that I've observed uh, were more going after Linux uh, systems. And yes, APIs continue to be a big, big problem. The latest example is the smart home system, Home Assistant. It does use an optional supervisor API. If you are using an out-of-date version of a supervisor, then an attacker is able to execute the commands on your system without authentication. Patches have been made available. And sort of as a reminder, I'm not sure if I mentioned it in a prior uh, podcast, but I keep seeing stories about uh, fake chat GPT applications. The latest one here is a fake Chrome extension that then steals uh, Facebook uh, credentials. Have also seen some stories about what I would consider fleeceware, which, well, looks like chat GPT 
charges you a bunch of money, but isn't really chat GPT. So uh, be aware uh, with, of course, anything that's popular like this, creating a lot of news, you will see scams. And the FBI is warning about yet another scam to steal a cryptocurrency. In this uh, case, uh, victims are enticed into, well, uh, earning money uh, by playing uh, games. These kind of gold farming activities, yes, they exist, usually not really all that lucrative. But the twist here is that uh, the victim is also asked to set up a crypto coin wallet and then deposit cryptocurrency in it, which of course will eventually be stolen by the criminal who has set up the wallet for you. So you're really depositing the crypto coins into the attacker's wallet, uh, not necessarily your own. Part of the problem, of course, is that most people, in particular people who would fall for these kind of gold farming uh, scams, usually don't really know how cryptocurrencies work and how a crypto coin wallet is supposed to be set up. Well, that is it for today. Thanks again for listening. Share it with your friends. Uh, tell me if I missed anything. Uh, Please you know, help me make this podcast better and uh, talk to you again on Monday. Bye.